Hi, Jason from Better Batteries. Today, I'm just going to have a talk to you about a common topic uh, of DC to DC charging or under bonnet charging in vehicles. Uh, it's a, it's a, a very complex environment and a very challenging environment for batteries. And it's, a, it's, it's an environment that we see it can either go really, really great most of the time or there are certain things that, that happen that can be very detrimental to the battery. So what we've done here is we've tried to recreate some of the scenarios that we actually see and so that we can re recreate here in the office what is happening to the batteries under bonnet. Um, we've used a product that we call our LCBM, which is a lead crystal battery monitor. Uh, this little unit records voltage and amperage in both directions. It records pitch, your ambient temperature, it's got an accelerometer, decelerometer, and, uh, and it'll log all that information by the second. We're able to then call that back either by Wi-Fi or a small SD card mounted on the board underneath. So by having these out in the field and recording data in multiple vehicles, we've been able to collate a lot of information on, on what's happening. What we've sort of, what we've concluded from the info is that when you put a battery under a bonnet, you, you've got it next to a big baking oven called an engine. And a lot of these modern common rails can generate quite a lot of heat. A lot of your Nissan patrols have got a turbo on the left hand side and a battery mounted right next to them. And that, that can cause a lot of heat radiated into that battery. Um, what, what we find is if you mount a battery in the front corners in behind the headlights, uh, they're certainly going to have a much better time of it than if the batteries are mounted in the back corners where the heat seems to wash out of the radiator across the, uh, across the engine and then the heat wells in those back corners. So um, we find that the back corners is really not an ideal location to put batteries. Uh, probably V8 Land Cruisers would generate a lot more heat in that back corner than most, but generally speaking back corners we, we would consider a bit of a no-no. Um, I personally like the EVFJ range for under bonnet. Uh, it can be a challenge because some people think that the part number in systems are a bit small, but they're a high capacity battery. They're just a C3 rated battery, which makes their part number small. And they can certainly handle the punishment of four driving and, and they've got a very, very strong bus bar system. Uh, and they require a lower charge current than our CNFJ range. So it's always I always recommend them. What we've got here is we've made a little out of basically out of pallets, we've created a, an under bonnet situation. So we've got a, a standard battery that we're just treating as a, a start battery, which is being charged by our alternator, which today is uh, is being powered by the Sterling 40 amp. Uh, which we want to undercurrent it a little bit because oftentimes people think I've got a 180 amp alternator, but they don't always put out 180 amps. They often put out about 60, and you've got to power the vehicle. So Sometimes you may not have more than sort of 30 or 40. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be producing that through a 25 amp DC to DC. So, so the, the 40 is going to provide enough power. And if the, the DC to DC charger needs more, it'll take it out of the battery anyway. So that's our start battery side and charging. That start battery then comes up into the box, which we've now heated. You can see here that that's at 90 degrees today. Uh, we're holding this box at, at about 90. I've got a um, halogen bulb on the inside and a ceramic heater on the back that's forcing air through a duct. And then we've got a little fan in there circulating it around. We actually mounted the DC to DC charger up in that environment as well. And that's quite common. It's quite a common place people put the DC to DC in the engine bay next to the battery. And of course, it'll suffer that ambient temperature heat as well. So, then we run, it, we run out, of the, uh, out of the battery, out of the second battery, our, our lead crystal, we're running the two fridges. I've got a CFX Waco 65 that produces, pulls about 5 amps. Every now and then I come past and just open the lid so that it does cycle. And then in behind it, I've got a three-way fridge out of the caravan. So that three-way fridge we've got on the DC mode, so three-way fridges will run from gas, uh, 240 volt or 12 volt. 
And this fridge is set up to run on the 12 volt, which produces, it draws about 11 amps. Now, it's interesting because the Waco has a low voltage disconnect point in it at about 11 and a half volts, it will, it will disconnect to protect the battery. But a typical caravan three-way fridge doesn't. On the, on the 12 volt or DC setting, it's got a little heater element in the back that's just basically a, a little static load that, that boils a little bit of ammonia in it. And uh, that constant current will go and go and go. So overnight, every night, this battery is drawn down to pretty much zero volts. Sometimes it's two to four volts, but uh, most mornings we come in and the fridge is running overnight and drawn this lead crystal down to, uh, to zero. Now that's happened for well, three months, so every night of the week, it's, it's around about 90 times it's, it's happened already and it's, it's still going and still charging. Uh, we've heated the box. Initially we did it just at room temperature, but about two months ago we introduced the heating. So for a good 60 of those cycles, it's been well in excess of 80 degrees. We recently added the bowl to get the heat up to 90. So that's the system, and, and as you'll see, uh, this is part of our internal R&D where we, we get to know not just more about our battery, but also how various DC to DC charges interact, and then we're able to interact with the engineering teams for those companies to make some recommendations. What I'd like to do uh, is just run you through the scenario here and why the battery gets put under so much pressure. Uh, and this, this is a fairly common scenario. So this might be in the back of the car, sometimes set on freeze to act as my refrigerator. And my three-way fridge is, is connected via the Anderson plug in my caravan. And uh, I might stop at a free camp overnight. Sometimes people don't flick them back over the gas, they just run off the battery overnight and it can be there long, you're going to drive all day tomorrow. What's interesting is once that battery gets down below sort of 3 or 9 volts, depending on the DC to DC charger, it can't see any of the batteries. It might see the start battery, but it can't see the second battery. So in the mornings we have to jump start this battery to get the DC to DC to start charging again. Now, the little scenario is I sit in a free camp overnight, I've sat there, I've run my batteries down quite low. Uh, I wake up in the morning, I think, well, that's okay, I'm going to drive today. My DC to DC charger will replenish my battery. Well, oftentimes, I could drive all day and I'll end up with hot food and a flat battery because the DC to DC charger didn't see the battery because it was below that 9 volts. So that's just something to watch. Now, the battery's gotten quite low. We've got a 25 amp DC to DC charger with about 15 to 16 amps. At the moment, and this is um, about quarter past one during the day, so we've, we've this already been running for, for quite a while today. We plug it in first thing in the morning uh, to emulate driving. Um, we're only at 11.6 volts and we're drawing um, a, a 14.3 uh, amps. So what's happened is the DC to DC being inside that hot environment has derated a little bit. So my 25 amp DC to DC is no longer a 25 amp, it may only be producing about 20, I think, when we, when we check it, and we can, it's, it produces about 20. But it's drawing 14 amps, and I'm charging while I'm driving, and I might drive for eight or nine hours while that is happening. And my, my charging is not big enough to overcome the load and charge the battery so that the battery stays in this constant state of almost bulk charge, where it's just constantly charging. And as you'll see in a moment, there's a deformation of the case. The case is swelling. It's interesting that this case, up to about 80 degrees, only swelled a little bit, but now that we've pushed the temperature to 90 degrees, we're noticing the swelling is increasing. So when we get batteries back that are so badly deformed that you think, wow, I can only begin to think what temperature those batteries must have been at. Keep in mind this happens every single day. Every day we discharge this battery to zero volts and every day we recharge it in a box at somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees. We want to push it to 100, so maybe stay tuned and see how we can under that. But that is our little DC DC. If anybody's got any questions, feel free to drop us a line or send us an email. We're happy to answer. But I 
I just hope that that goes some way to, for you to understand some of the complexities of DC charging. Thanks for your time.